Welcome to In the Loop with Laura. Today I'm honored to have Anna Heltpacker on the show with me today. Local lady, crafter, singer, multiple things. She now lives in Warsaw, but she's back um, today. And I asked her to bring in a few projects and some of the creative things that she's done. So welcome, Anna. Thank you. You have been crafting for a long time. A long time. So what are some of your early crafts? Um, I have crocheted since I was five. Um, embroidery when I was very young. I think my grandmother sat us at the sewing machine when we turned six. Lots of crafty things. Okay. So when did you start knitting? Um, probably I tried in middle school, but I picked it up 14, 15 years old. I was in high school. I didn't even know you crocheted. Do you still crochet? Mm hmm Yeah, I do. I don't have any projects with me today. I didn't even think about it, but, um, yeah, I do. That's fine. That's fine. Well, we've got a few projects here, and I wanted to start with the earliest one. This is <coughs> another textile thing, and it reminds me of something that Rebecca Brovant brought in. But um, tell us the history behind this. So um, I was getting married. I was engaged. And uh, I really wanted to Move do um, a brooch bouquet. But I very quickly found out that brooches, if you don't already collect them, can be pricey and also heavy in a bouquet. Well, yes. So um, my friend Chrissy Rossworm and I got together and brainstormed and looked at some ideas on Pinterest. And um, so this is? This is the brainchild of us. And what is it? My wedding bouquet. This is her wedding bouquet. Mm -hmm. So gosh, a lot of effort went into this. So you and Chrissy, um, you can maybe see some of the inner workings here. It's almost like a cauliflower or a broccoli. <laughs> and this is <coughs> similar to what Rebecca brought in, which was a button, like a button bouquet. Okay, yeah. That was partly inspiration for... Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we've got, do you know what gauge wire is? This is really stiff. It's um, floral wire. Okay. But it's not like, if I set it down, it's not going to bend on its own right, weight. Right, yeah. And it comes up, and then instead of just having just buttons or the hard items, you have some textiles worked into here. First mm -hmm. of all, okay, where did the textiles come from? Um, my grandmother's house. Um, she is an avid, was an avid quilter, um, and so her collection of cotton fabric was extensive, and I rated it. <laughs> with no remorse and uh, cut out petals and sewed them together and bought some buttons so they were oh, all the did? same. Yeah, I They're did buy all, the buttons. Okay, so it was uniform. Yeah. So the petals you had said were cut out like this. They had a maybe a one inch flat section mm -hmm. and then come up. Mm -hmm. Are they all exactly the same? You had a template? Yeah, we had a like a pattern, like a little cardboard uh -huh. <laughs> that we just made and and then, but the petals are not all, they don't all have the same, because this one is, is a thin fabric. It looks like there's a whole lot of petals. Yeah, it kind of varied. It depended on how stiff your fabric was. Mm -hmm. and how did you draw them together? Um, you just, so you take your sewing needle and you would draw it through at the bottom of the petal. Okay. And kind of cinch around. everything <coughs> together to make a circle. Um, and it kind of, you can kind of tell back here, it kind of doubles up on itself. Oh, and then you had a little square of felt. And then I through. knotted it, yeah. And then the felt is actually just for the wire. Okay. So the, the, the flowers themselves can stay together with just the thread. The and thread. The, mm -hmm. And then when you sewed the button, were you sewing it through just this fabric or did yeah. you sew through the felt? It was just, it was just this fabric. So the... And then when you were completely done, you mm -hmm. hot glued there's a tiny piece of felt and then the wire and another tiny piece of felt to kind of cement it all together. And then they all come down and you used lovely duct tape. I did. <laughs> I did. Because duct tape can fix anything. Anything, even wedding bouquets. Well, and it has that little silver shimmer underneath. I mm -hmm. think it's lovely. Yeah. And then it covered and it in glued. lace. Yeah. Yep. Very lovely. And how many of these did you make? 
Um, for bridesmaids, mine is like shades of white. Um, the girls all had shades of like lavenders and grays in theirs. Um, and what color were their buttons? I think they were all the They're same all the as same. mine, yeah. And then did everyone have a few? Everyone had a few little brooches. My in-laws are very kind, gracious people, and they, um, for Christmas one year, I got swatches of fat quarters with oh. a brooch on every one. It was precious. Well, that's nice that they contributed to the bookcase. Mm -hmm. Are any of these sentimental to you, or they're just, they picked up the colors and nope. kind of said what you wanted to yep. say? Yeah, they just picked them up. And it's super fun that you can still have this. It hasn't wilted. Uh, did you have one that you then went on to um, throw? Or what no. did you do? You just didn't We were very anything. untraditional. We didn't throw anything. And he didn't craft a garter belt for you then? No, we didn't craft any garter belts. There was no weird, like... Okay. <laughs> Enough said. So we have another completed project and two more that are beginning. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this next completed project that you have. Okay. This is now, oh, I wanted to say for the bouquet that not only did Chrissy help, but also Anna went on a, um, a website called Pinterest. And I know that the RTC newsletter has had that featured a few times, www. Pinterest, which is the word interest with a P in front of it, P-I-N-T-E-R-E-S-T -E 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 dot com. Mm -hmm. It is a massive uh, wormhole. You'll go on there. If you're crafty, it will take you hours to get off. Yes. Do you use it? Often? All the time. Okay. Yeah. So when you go on, I, I'm, it's been so long since I first signed on. You sign on with a name. You put a mm -hmm. name and a password, and they give you a virtual board. So if you're familiar with scrapbooking type things mm -hmm. and then you get different categories you can set up and then you wander aimlessly forever <laughs> through the web of the internet picking up pictures the whole idea of Pinterest is you're taking pictures and you're pinning them onto a virtual board and they so. usually link to things so like mm -hmm. if you if you're into cooking um, you would pin a picture of a recipe and that picture will take you to a link that has the recipe on it so you are Similar. keeping it in this and you, you want to see this recipe again. Yeah. And then you just click on it and it takes you to the website. So what are some of the boards you have? Um, fiber projects uh -huh. is one of them. <coughs> Crafty things is one of them. There's several. That's pretty broad. Um, I have, <laughs> it is broad. Fiber projects is like anything knitted and crocheted that I find inspiration or a pattern on. Um, Crafty things is more uh -huh. like my bouquet, um, I scrapbook, I anything crafty you can think of, I probably do. So um, things like that. For cooking and for my articles that I'm writing, I'll often go through and search out pictures that I think would complement it, and I'll add a board for that. Mm. And then you can follow. Then whenever you pin something, it will bring up, well, this other person has pinned it in this <laughs> board. And then you can follow. Go over there. Well, maybe they have something else that's of interest. And yeah. then you just keep going. So I say that because Anna looked through. Um, you can enter in search mm -hmm. fields, too. Did you enter in? I think we looked okay. at. It's been a while. Um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a while. Um, I think we looked at button bouquets and brooch bouquets. We looked at how they were structured. Um, the, mm -hmm. the flower itself is, uh, was a Chrissy's idea. Mm. She does a lot of headbands and stuff. It's similar um, to how you construct a yo-yo. Yeah, yep, very similar. Um, a, a, a fabric yo-yo, excuse me. <laughs> the people who aren't familiar <laughs> with quilting. Yeah, it's very similar to that, minus the um, individual petal Correct. part of it. Um, so she had kind of thought up that and mm -hmm. we had to look at Pinterest for inspiration on how to really mm -hmm. put it together Dude. and yeah well as well Pinterest and another oh, I'm using this as a springboard to talk about another website that is so valuable for knitters mm -hmm. and crocheters um, for Pinterest and for Ravelry.com which is www.ravelry.com Ravelry.com both of them you can go on and <clears throat> it might be the very project that you want to do, but if you go through pictures of the 1,000 other people who have done that project, you can 
understand things that were wrong with the pattern or ways that people modified the pattern that you might want to modify it or just simply look at the colors people used. So you could look at color, you know, you've always been thinking about a bright fuchsia and chartreuse together and then you look at them and think, no, that really wasn't what I had in mind <laughs> for my bridal bouquet. Yeah. So this you got off of Ravelry. Yes, I did. And how did you find it, Anna? <laughs> I um, I actually springboarded okay. off of Pinterest into Ravelry. So um, I know lots of crafters that are avid users of Ravelry. I kind of really use a lot of Pinterest. Yes. So a lot of times Ravelry patterns will be on Pinterest. Correct. Um, and so a lot, I actually found a picture of this shawl mm. and I thought it was beautiful mm -hmm. and I found out it was on Ravelry and actually I looked at your site and I had seen that you had made it and I thought well if Laura can do it. <laughs> That's right if Laura can do it so can you. <laughs> so, so I um, have made this in a dark blue and I have a second one on my needles buried somewhere in my projects that are being done. So isn't this beautiful? Um, we will, you can see it better against the white, but I'm just holding it up so you mm -hmm. can see the length of it. It yeah. is a very traditional lace shawl. And if we look a little closer here, let me throw these off. Do you want to, can I say something about construction or would Absolutely. you like to say anything about it? Go okay, for it. with a lot of traditional shawls, you will have a central. Um, stitch that you do and then sometimes you'll have a separate stitch at the edging and so here these are almost like little leaves mm -hmm. coming down and then the fun thing about Haruni is it comes into large leaves and it's a really nice <coughs> edging. Now how, where did you start? That's one tricky thing about shawls. It's they're fine done. Um, lace is simply well-placed holes and some people get really freaked out about doing lace because they think I could never do that. Well, I think that every knitter at some point has put a hole in their garment that they mm -hmm. didn't expect. And uh, if you can do that, then all you need to do is do it planned. <laughs> it's really not. Is it hard? Was it hard to do this? No. Have you, have you done lace before? No. You've never done lace oh, before? Oh, well, a yes. A little bit. A little bit here and there, but this was my first like big the whole thing lace, is lace project. Yeah. Right. So where do you start? Is um, magical? You actually cast on, I don't remember. It's right here. You start, yeah, you start here and you cast on. Is this the sideways, right? Yeah. You cast on going this way. So you cast on two or three stitches and you knit a little garter strip. Yes. And then wow, you pick up, you keep the two stitches you had here. You pick up five or six stitches here and you pick up the stitches here. So you have a little a little U and mm -hmm. this side is as it is right now. Yeah. And then from that point you knit down. Yes. Increasing constantly. These two stitches on either side of the center you increase every other row? I think that's right, yeah. And you purl back? Mm -hmm. So you're always increasing here and what that does is it forces the fabric on the sides out and so you have a flat fabric. And then when you're done your last rows are the ones that take forever Yes. because what you're doing is you're at this point and you've got all the way around, I don't know, 500 or so stitches, depends mm -hmm. on how long you make your shawl. And then at the very end, oftentimes, was there a knitted uh, option or yeah. was it? There were two mm -hmm. options on how to finish. You want to tell us how you finished because it's so amazing. Yeah, I so at the very end you can use your knitting needle to basically do a crochet stitch uh -huh. or you can switch to a crochet hook and um, do your little chains mm -hmm. and do a... So she had like three stitches here and like three stitches here mm -hmm. or something like that and so you gather the three stitches together yep. with a single crochet. Yep. Chain I think five. I think that's Something right. Something like that. And then gather them together in a single crochet and chain five. It, it is much simpler Faster. than doing the knitted cast mm -hmm. off. And it looks beautiful. This is a wonderful example of how knitting loves crochet and crochet loves knitting. It's there is so no war. True. We are friends. Friends. Hands across the ocean. Yes.
In fact, they hold hands. Aww. Right here. So it goes all the way around. And Haruni, do you remember what Haruni means? Yeah, it's um, actually J.R.R. Tolkien's mm. Elvish language, right? Am I, I saying so. this right? Um, and it means grandmother. So this was actually um, a Mother's Day present for my mother, um, who has, how many of them are there? A pastel. Am I number six or seven? <laughs> I don't even remember. One, two, three, four, five. There's five of them. And we're pregnant with number six. And my brother Joe is pregnant with number oh, seven. So, I didn't know that. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. To all of you. To all of us. So, so she is grandma now. It was, so I thought, an appropriate pattern name and also just very pretty. Mm -hmm. I love this, this little kind of flounced mm -hmm. end. This is where. All, the tip comes down. Yep. Very nice. So when you knit lace for the first time, it can be very intimidating because um, as you're knitting, the yarn is being told to go into a new position and it kind of crunches up like this on your needles. Mm -hmm. And you think, this is not what the picture looks like. <laughs> this is, it's supposed to be open and airy and flat and lovely and I'm supposed to be wearing gorgeous clothes wafting through say the lobby of the Ritz Carlton. That's right. That's what knitting lace should feel like. But when it comes off the needles, it pretty much looks like ramen noodles. Yeah. And you panic a bit and then you remember, no, Laura told me it would be this way. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when you're done with lace? Can you give us a, um, a rundown? Yeah, so I took it off the needles and I thought that. Um, this is actually a cotton blended with acrylic, mm. so I knew it would not... So there's no wool or natural fiber in it whatsoever? Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Uh, well, cotton. And we have talked a little <laughs> bit before about types of yarns. Most people who work with them have their own bias, either due to the feel or due to, I don't know, mm -hmm. upbringing or whatever. But really, every different fiber content has certain applications that are going to be the best for it. Yeah. So, so the, the benefit of cotton acrylic is it's going to be lightweight. It's going to be something you'll wear in the summer. Yep. It's going to wash up well. Yeah. So, and that was for all of those reasons why I picked it. Um, I was knitting for my mom. I knew that she mm. would want to throw it in a washer and I didn't want it to um, shrink or... Mm -hmm. What's the... What's Felt. The, yes, thank Felt you. Felt or full. <laughs> and that's one of the negative aspects of a natural fiber like wool or alpaca. I think yeah. llama, camel, that kind of thing. Yeah. Water buffalo. <laughs> Water buffalo. Yak. Um, so I picked that for that reason. Yeah. Um, and so when you take it off of your needles, it looks like a big bunch of blah. And I put a towel down and I got it wet and you pin it. How did it. you get it wet? Did you just spray it? Did you soak it? I soaked it. Okay, I that's the normal it. thing to do, especially for a thin shawl. Yeah, so I soaked it and then you, I spread out I think a couple of towels and I got out a bunch of straight pins and you pin it to its measurements. I pinned it actually out a little bigger because I knew mm -hmm. with the cotton and the acrylic it would kind of shrink up a bit mm -hmm. again. Um, and you pin out all of the oh, little... You pin out the edges. Yep, all the edges. It's actually very pretty when it's pinned out because you can see the... Here we can do it. The work, the... Top angle, right. It's like rosy almost at the end. Um, you need a lot of pins to do that. A lot this. of pins to do that for this, yeah. And then you let it dry and we call that blocked. And then it's blocked. And then it's blocked. So you put the towels out. Did you put them on a hardwood floor? Did you put them on a bed? Did you put them on a carpet? I put them on my carpet. Okay. Right there in the living room. You can do that as long <laughs> as you tell your husband <laughs> that the shawl is being blocked in the middle of the living room. I have used a bed. <laughs> Especially shawls will dry very quickly, mm -hmm. and shawls can be large. But I have done that and then put out a sheet. And sometimes if you have a checked sheet, mm -hmm. it's nice because it can you can make sure lines are straight. Oh, yeah. Or sometimes your checks, you can buy a checked piece of fabric where it's an inch. And that can help you know your width and your 
So, ta talk us through, this is a wonderful <laughs> example of mistakes and mishaps as well, which everybody has done. Yes. So don't be laughing at Anna at home. This is something so wise that Anna did, and I'm very, very proud of her because about, you know, 50% of knitters don't even do this. What yes. is this? Because I'm guessing this is not the snuggle wrap, the baby, <laughs> although for the size of the baby right now, it might, might be, be appropriate. appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's called a gauge swatch. Hooray, gauge swatch. And as a teacher, I say, hooray, gauge swatch, Anna. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens is there's usually on your pattern, it calls for a specific size um, needle and a specific ga gauge um, yarn. Well, let's see on yours if it has that. Okay, so right on her label, it says suggested needles and gauge. Three and a half inches equals an inch on number ten and a half. Mm-hmm, yeah. So, and it has here a five, and I've talked about this before too. So five is uh, the American universal sign for super bulky. Mm -hmm. And so gauge means, um, do you want to tell them or shall I? A gauge is what, you, how many stitches per inch you will get based on what size needle and what um, size yarn you're using. Okay, so why is that important? It's important because um, that will tell you how much yarn you need for a project. Um, it will also tell you how big the project. How big the project up. will end up? Yeah. So because I was so excited about this project, <laughs> we leave at five o'clock in the morning, and I grabbed. I didn't look at my pattern. Mistake number. Mistake number one. <laughs> And uh, I grabbed what looked to me at 5 o'clock in the morning like a 10 and a half. That's very close. Which is very close. It's an 11. Yep. And so yep. Anna has brought in her. This is a, a lovely thing to have. And um, we're getting closer to the season for giving gifts. Yes. This is a nice thing um, to give because when you have it, you lose it. <laughs> You it's have a great one in your stocking stuffer. Yes, is what we're saying. It is a gauge and a needle needle gauge and a swatch gauge. Mm -hmm. So all these little holes. If you have a needle and it didn't have the common courtesy to tell you what it is, oh look, it's an eleven. So Anna grabbed an eleven, and right here next to it is ten and a half. And it won't fit in that hole. It won't fit in that hole. Um, and underneath it, they have the millimeter size, which is the European way of measuring needles, and I think it's better. Hmm. So she has 8 millimeter <laughs> needle, and she wanted 6.5 millimeter needle, and 1.5 millimeters will make a difference. Yes. Also, <laughs> we haven't mentioned yet what the pattern says. <laughs> the pattern called for a 7. 7 needle. Mm -hmm, which, is which is pretty similar to this one that I brought. This is an 8. And if we go on the top down view, you can see there might be a little bit of difference between <laughs> the two diameters. Yeah. Yeah. So you're supposed to have a super bulky knit on a seven? Yeah. You know your hands are going to hurt a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay. When you go down or when you have a non-elastic fiber like cotton, mm -hmm. oftentimes your hands can hurt at the end of this. So if we take our lovely handy dandy needle gauge, so here, this one is actually an eight, not a seven. This one is an 11, not mm -hmm. a 10 and a half. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you're traveling and, like I said, it, your needle doesn't have the common courtesy to tell you what it is, you just put it inside and go, oh, look, it's an eight. But this part here has, um, is this inches? I'm trying to see here. Stitches per inch. Okay. So uh, is this supposed to be four? I'm confused. Yeah, Can you tell me how it works? I don't know. All right. Mine's, mine's better. <laughs> Let me get mine. Good. Yes. <laughs> I, this is an inch. Oh. This is an inch. But I have never understood what these mean. I was hoping that maybe you would like... Yours is better. Here's mine. The gauge <laughs> that I travel with. <laughs> there are some actually really nice gauges. Um, needle gauges that are circular, they look like a shell, Ooh. you can wear them, they're necklaces. I have one that's for um, the suck, the very smallest ones, and mm -hmm. it's on an owl and their earrings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for this one, within these two arms, 
is two inches. You lay it down on your fabric that should be at least four inches wide by four inches deep because if it's just on the needles like this, it can squish up and it can not be true. So what you're supposed to do is block it. You're supposed to block it. I didn't do that. Yes, and please do. Be, well, for some things it matters. For um, shawls, uh, if it's an inch longer, no one cares. If it's a sock and it's an inch longer, then you have to get bigger-footed friends to gift things <laughs> to. I mean, a hat, if a hat is two inches larger, ask my husband how he know I know this. Okay, so you lay it down, and within these bars, mm -hmm. you count. One stitch, two stitch, three, four, five, and probably a quarter. And yes, it does make a difference. Because if you're making a sweater that's going to go around a belly, you have, you know, eight of those and you have another, or four of those, you have another stitch, you have eight. You have 16, you have two extra inches. And that makes a difference on a sweater. It does. So this is one, two, three, four, five and a quarter stitches to two inches. Mm -hmm. So it's two and seven fifths. I don't know, something like that, for one inch. And your pattern is supposed to be three and a half stitches per inch. Okay, so she could, because it's like a blanket, she could theoretically just keep going on the size needles, come up with something, mm -hmm. but what's going to happen is that it's going to be larger, mm -hmm. it's going to absorb much more yarn, which yes. she did not buy, no. and doesn't have another gift certificate, hint, hint. <laughs> But more so when you, because it is very stretchy, and if you wash it, it's just not going to, it's going to grow one way or the other, mm -hmm. and it might be lopsided. So if any of you have ever had a hand knitted or hand crocheted sweater, and uh, later you said, oh, why did Aunt Martha think that my arms were six <laughs> inches longer than they are? She might have knit or crocheted it correctly but it might not have been tight enough, it might have been a different gauge. You might not have known that your arms were ridiculously short. Yes. yes. Could be a lot of factors. Mm -hmm. So you have brought a lot to the table for us to look at and think about. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I appreciate having a knitter on and a crocheter. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who is interested in a baby project or maybe they're going to get married or have an event and they're like, uh-oh, she's mentioned a couple things, what should I do? What do you mean? I mean, should, what should they, where should they go for inspiration? Should they be afraid? Don't be afraid. No, no. If you're really that afraid, find a friend that um, is crafty, that will spur you in the right direction when you're feeling discouraged. I would say that would be the most encouraging. There were days that I didn't want to sew any more flowers for my wedding bouquet. And um, on those days, I went to my grandma's house and we sat on the back porch and she sewed flowers with me. Um, lots of memories in this little bouquet. Um, or I would call Chrissy and say, I'm not making any more flowers. And she would say, I will come pick some up and I will do some for you. That's a wonderful tip. Um, yeah. It's good to have crafty friends that when you are feeling, what's the word? Discouraged, Discouraged, maybe. yeah, or... or just tired. To <laughs> you just want to be done with a project that you can't be done with. Um, for them to be there. Support, support system. Those are good. Well, I appreciate you being my friend. I need more friends. I have a lot of unfinished <laughs> projects. <laughs> And we can help each other through it. But I'm excited for you. I'm excited about your newest project in your belly. Yes. And thank you for sharing with all of us. I think we've all learned. Hooray. Thank you.